One morning, the postman brought Mr. Grimes a large letter. Uh. And shortly afterwards, the raggy dolls heard him shouting, No, no, no! Never again! Something's upset him, said Dotty. Let's go and investigate. So when the coast was clear, they crept into Mr. Grimes' office. And in his waste paper basket, they found a photograph torn in half. It's Oz and Boz, Mr. Grimes' twin nephews, said Dotty. Zut alors! They look like uh, little monsters, exclaimed Claude. D -d -d Don't worry, said Hi-Fi reassuringly. I've heard Mr. G -G Grimes talking to them on the t -t telephone. He always sh -sh shouts, so they must live a l long way away. Good, said Back to Front. Then they're not likely to come here, are they? Famous last words, thought Sad Sack. Outside, a taxi was ticking over. It had just brought a lady who looked exactly like Mr. Grimes in a skirt. And with her were the terrible twins, Oz and Boz. They were each carrying a suitcase. Uncle! Uncle! Where are you? They called. Mr. Grimes opened the door and shut it again, fast. Now, now, Grimesy, said his sister. That's no way to welcome your family. Go away, said Mr. Grimes. Shan't! Won't! shouted the twins. They've come to stay the weekend, said Mr. Grimes' sister. Never again, said Mr. Grimes. On the contrary, Grimesy, said his sister. I told you in my letter, I need a rest. The raggy dolls saw her drive away in the taxi, while Mr. Grimes led Oz and Boz indoors. We'll have to lie low till they're gone, said Dotty. Out of sight, out of mind, agreed Princess. We'll stay in our bin. Yeah, no problem. And we'll only t -t -t talk at n -n night. Good thinking. I won't even talk then, whispered Lucy. We're in for trouble, thought Sad Sack. You mark my words. Sure enough, the raggy dolls were hardly back in their bin before they heard footsteps and Mr. Grimes' voice saying, This way, lads. There's some dolls in here y you can play with. Dolls? cried Oz. Dolly wallies, jeered Boz. Now look here, said Mr. Grimes firmly. There's to be no trouble. Trouble, said Oz, innocently. What do you mean, trouble, said Boz. You know what I mean, said Mr. Grimes. Last time you came, it took me a whole week to clear up after you. You're not going into my factory this time. You can play with these dolls in the yard. Lucy felt a sticky hand around her waist. Then she was lifted high into the air. Gimme, yelled Oz. I want to. Find your own dolly, Wally, shouted Boz. Oz thought that playing football with Sad Sack would be fun. He kicked him high into the air, through the window, and into the branches of a tree. Sad Sack saw the world upside down. He saw the terrible twins in the yard carrying the rest of the raggy dolls. Help! he cried. But no one heard him. Oz grabbed Hi-Fi and Boz grabbed Claude. Sacre bleu! spluttered Claude. This is an outrage! Stop, stop, stop it! L -l 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 Let me g -g go! crackled Hi-Fi. These dolls squeak! cried Oz. Look, Boz! They squeak. The terrible twins began jumping up and down on the raggy dolls to make them squeak louder. Go on, squeak, shouted Oz. Squeak, squeak, yelled Boz. After a while, they grew tired of jumping and decided to dig a hole in the yard to see if they could reach Australia. Give me that spade, shouted Boz. Shan't, screamed Oz. Give me it. No. It's my turn. No, it isn't. Yes, it is. Tisn't. 
Tis. Tisn't. Tis. Tisn't. Tis. By lunchtime, there were holes all over the yard with mounds beside them like molehills. When Mr. Grimes saw them, he was furious. Look what you've done! After lunch, you can fill them all up again, said Mr. Grimes grimly. Quick, said Dotty. Now's our chance to escape. Is everyone here? I'm here. And here. And there. And over there, called Lucy, who'd been pulled about so much she was scattered all over the place. R -r -r Raggy dolls to the r -r rescue, cried High Five. He picked up one of Lucy's arms. Princess picked up the other. Claude fetched her head. Here's one of your legs, Lucy, said back to front. Where's the other? She wailed. I've lost a leg. Oh, heck. Search the yard, everybody, ordered Dotty. But at that moment, out came the terrible twins again. Follow me, hissed Dotty. She led the way to an old tarpaulin, which they all agreed would make a good hiding place till Oz and Boz left. It wasn't until they were safely underneath that Princess realized someone was missing. Oh dear, where's Satsack? She cried. Oh, he is still up in that tree, said Claude. And those monster boys are trying to knock him down. Stop that, called Mr. Grimes. I want all those holes filled in by tea time or there'll be no tea. It's not fair, muttered Oz and Boz. Uncle's a meanie. But they left Sad Sack alone and set to work. At last, all the holes were filled in and the yard was back to normal. The terrible twins were so tired, they ate their chocolate biscuits quietly and watched television till bedtime, like ordinary children. Outside in the moonlight, the Raggy Dolls were rescuing Sadsack. Go on, jump, called Dotty. You can't stay up there forever. All he has to do is close his eyes, said Claude. Yeah, no problem, agreed back to front. One, two, three, jump, called all the Raggy Dolls together. Help, cried Sadsack, and he jumped. He's only a bit winded, said Dotty. He'll be all right in a moment. Can we find my other leg now? Asked Lucy, anxiously. We can t -t try, said High Five. B -b -b but I'm afraid it's got b -b buried in one of those holes. And we c can't undig them all again. Oh dear, cried Princess. Poor Lucy. She'll have to hop on one leg for the rest of her life. No, she won't, said Sadsack, sitting up suddenly. Here it is, in one of the holes. And he pulled the missing leg out of the loose earth underneath him. You landed in just the right spot, said Dotty. Well done. Oh, Sadsack, you are clever, cried Lucy. The raggy dolls went to sleep under the tarpaulin and didn't wake up again till the sun was high in the sky and the terrible twins had gone home with their mother. They can't come visiting ever again, said Mr. Grimes. No, no, no. And this time, I really mean it. Never. One morning, Claude put seven eggs into a saucepan. Good, thought Sad Sack. Boiled eggs for breakfast. My favourite. The clock ticked away. One, two, three minutes. I like them when the yellow's all runny, said Sad Sack, licking his lips. 
excusez-moi. Another half a minute, and they'll be just right. These eggs are not for eating, said Claude. Not for eating? No, said Dotty, who was collecting spoons from a drawer. They are for running, explained Claude. Running? We're having a raggy doll sports day, said Dotty. And the first race is going to be an egg and spoon race. So boil those eggs really hard, Claude. I'm not running in any races, said Sadsack. Oh, yes, you are. We're all running, said Dotty. Quite a crowd had gathered in the field. It was the first time the Raggy Dolls had held a sports day. A rabbit announced the first race. The first race will be an egg and spoon race, he called. His voice boomed so loud through the megaphone that it was difficult to understand what he was saying. But the Raggy Dolls were already lining up at the start. They each had an egg and a spoon, and the rabbit called, Get ready! Get set! Go! And blew his whistle. Off they raced. Come on, Claude! Come on, Dotty! Princess! Lucy! Keep at it! Run! Run! Yelled the crowd. The raggy dolls kept bumping into each other because their eyes were on their eggs. But it was soon clear who would win. Well done, panted Dotty. I could see I was in front, so I just kept going, <laughs> explained back to front. Sad Sack was still in the middle of the field, picking up his egg for the hundredth time. The race is over, called Dotty. You can st stop r r running, crackled Hi-Fi. Someone had to be last, said Lucy kindly. The next race is a sack race, announced the rabbit. A what race? gasped Sadzak. A sack race, explained Dotty. We have to get into sacks and hop. But you won't need to get into sack because you're a sack already. <sighs> I'm not hopping anywhere, <sighs> said Sadzak. Spoil sport, snapped Dotty again. I'm not a spoil sport. Yes, you are. No, I'm not. You are. I'm not. Prove it then. I will too, said Sadzak. On your marks, everyone. Get ready. Get set. Go. Boomed the rabbit. The raggy dolls hopped like kangaroos. First Claude led the field, then Hi-Fi, then Lucy who was carrying one of her legs because she said it was easier to hop that way. Lucy, 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 yelled the crowd as Lucy hopped past the finishing post. <sighs> well done, panted Dotty. Where's Sadzak? I haven't started yet, said Sadzak. Oh, really? I thought if I waited till you were all tired, I'd catch up and beat you all, explained Sadzak. It seemed a good idea at the time. It was a very silly idea, said Dotty. Do buck up, Sadzak, and join in properly. What's next? I jump, said Claude. You mean high jump? No, no, I jump, laughed Claude. First contestant, boomed the rabbit. <coughs> Et voila, I am the best, no? said Claude. We've all got to have a go before we know who's best, said Dotty. Your turn, Hi-Fi. Don't r -r rush me, said Hi-Fi. <coughs> Lucy followed, then back to front, then Princess, and then Dotty. Oh no, it's my turn now, thought Sadzak. He was so heavy, he couldn't even get his feet off the ground, so he tried pulling himself over the bar. Not allowed! Disqualified! shouted the rabbit. Sad Sack sat and watched, while the other raggy dolls jumped higher and higher. Come on, Greasy! Come on, Donny! In the end, 
clawed one. It is as I said, I am the best, he cried. Don't boast, said Dotty crossly. No one was behaving as they should. I am saying only what is vraiment. True or not, it's still boasting. Oh la la. Don't ooh la la me. Dotty's getting cross, isn't she? I wonder why, whispered Lucy. She's been working too hard, preparing everything, said back to front. She'll be all right when it's over. What's next? The next race is an obstacle race, boomed the rabbit. Obstacle race? I don't like the sound of that, thought Sadsack. But Dotty had her eye on him, so he couldn't escape. The raggy dolls had to thread needles, drink mugs of water backwards, climb through hoops, and in between, run as fast as they could from one end of the field to the other. Three cheers for Dotty! yelled the crowd as Dotty came in the clear winner. <sighs> it isn't fair. I'm no good at sports, grumbled Sadsack. I'll never win anything. There was a horse race next. Hi-Fi and Princess ran neck and neck all the way till suddenly at the very end, Princess's horse gave a great spurt and pulled ahead. Racing is the sport of kings, explained Princess breathlessly. The rabbit agreed that he'd seen several royal persons galloping across the fields in his time. Hi-Fi soon cheered up because he won the long jump. It looked as if he was flying through the air. Bravo, shouted Claude. Well done, agreed Dotty. Sensational, cried back to front. And now it was time for the prizes. They were brightly coloured rosettes, which the rabbit pinned onto their chests. All the raggy dolls had won a race, except Sad Sack. I don't mind, he said. But he looked as if he minded a lot. Oh, cheer up, Sad Sack, said Princess. It's time for refreshments. Mmm. Sports days aren't as bad as I thought, thought Sad Sack. Sorry I was so bossy, said Dotty, giving him a hug. Sad Sack finished a huge mouthful and grinned. I bet I could beat all of you in an eating contest, <laughs> he laughed. <laughs> that is true, my friend, said Claude. The raggy dolls agreed and presented Sad Sack with his very own rosette. I've just thought of something, said Dotty. You know those eggs we used in the egg and spoon race? Well, you might as well finish them off while you're at it. Good thinking, agreed Sad Sack. And he did. It's not much of a life when you're just a pretty face. Just to be whoever you are is no disgrace. Look around and you will find people of every kind. Like the raggy dolls, raggy dolls, raggy dolls, raggy dolls. Raggy dolls. dolls like you and me. Raggy dolls, raggy dolls, raggy dolls, raggy dolls. Raggy dolls. Raggy dolls. made imperfectly. So if you're not at ease with your knobbly knees and your fingers are all thumbs, stand on your two left feet and join our raggy doll chums. Cause raggy dolls, raggy dolls, raggy dolls.